Hey lovelies. So over the last year or so, I have received a lot of requests from you guys asking for more paleo recipes on the channel. So your wish is my command. Today, I thought it would be fun to share three one pot paleo dinner ideas that are low carb, but high in flavor. The best part about all of these is whether you practice a paleo diet or not, they are super, super tasty. So you really can't go wrong. Just before I get to all of that deliciousness, I wanted to share this deliciousness with you once again. My brand new cookbook, Meals Made Easy, is just a few weeks from hitting store shelves, which is so incredible because the project has been more than two years in the making. If you're interested in getting your hands on a copy, which of course I hope you are, you can pre-order a copy now to make sure that you get yours delivered the day it goes on sale, which by the way is April 23rd. And as a big thank you for all of your support, Anyone who pre-orders the book can also get a sneak peek at five of my very favorite recipes. All you need to do is click the link in the description for all the details on how you can get your sneak peek sent straight to your inbox. Now let's talk about some one pot paleo dinner ideas, starting with this amazing Greek chicken and veggie dish that is just bursting with color, texture, and flavor. Come on, what more could you ask for from a dinner? I have got a nice big skillet heating up on the stove. You want a big skillet for a job like this because as you can see, there's a lot headed in here and you don't want to learn when it's too late that your skillet is too small. It's happened to me before, it's a nightmare. To get started, I'm going to heat some olive oil up in my skillet. I'm going to let that get nice and hot on medium high heat. And then I'm going to add some chicken breast to that. I'm using boneless, skinless chicken breast. I've cut it into one inch cubes. I'm going to hit it with a little salt and a little pepper because of course we wanna make sure it's really well seasoned. You could swap in some pork in this recipe or some shrimp, those would work really well. What I really dig about this recipe is that it's kind of like a souvlaki or a shish kebab, but totally deconstructed, so a whole lot easier to make. What's not to like about that? Once it's browned on all sides, we are going to remove it from the pan while we get to work on cooking our veggies. Now, you could technically leave the chicken in the pan, but the reason I like to take it out is because by the time the veggies cook, your chicken ends up overcooked, and that's not what we want, because you end up with this really rubbery texture that's just not that delicious. So, take my advice, remove the chicken from the pan, and then get your veggies happening. Today, I'm using a combination of some white onion, some red bell pepper, some orange bell pepper, and some zucchini to get started. So lots of color, lots of crunch. You'll notice that I've left all my veggies in nice big chunks. You want something you can stick a fork into. That's super important here. Because my skillet is nice and hot already, it's gonna take no time for these veggies to soften up and become really, really tasty. Then I'll get my cooked chicken back into the pan, as well as loading in some cherry tomatoes that I've cut in half and some pitted Kalamata olives. So as I'm sure you can imagine, we've already got a ton of great flavor in this skillet, but to take things right over the top, I am also going to add some Greek seasoning to this, a little salt and a little pepper, as well as a few good squeezes of lemon juice. What is not to love, guys? This dish is effortless to make and comes together in under 20 minutes on the stove. If you wanna make this even easier, go ahead and prep your veggies and your chicken during your Sunday meal prep, and then come Monday or Tuesday night, just dump them all in a skillet and you have dinner on the table in no time flat. Plus, it tastes pretty good too. Next up, we have the recipe that our team on set was most excited about today, and that is this Cajun shrimp and sausage skillet. Now I should mention that there is some debate within the paleo community as to whether or not sausage is actually paleo because it can be a little more processed and contain preservatives and additives, things like nitrates and stuff. I checked the package and the sausage I'm using in this recipe doesn't have any funky additives, but if you're avoiding sausage on your paleo diet, that's totally fine. Swap in some chicken here instead. Both will work really well. Now I've got a nice hot skillet on the stove. I'm just going to add a little bit of oil to that. We don't want anything sticking while we do this. And I'm going to add my sausage to the skillet. For this recipe, we are going to be cooking our proteins in batches to make sure we get really nice texture in each. You could just throw it all into the skillet, but trust me, it won't be nearly as delicious. This is one of those situations in which your patience and your hard work will be rewarded with flavor, which is something I am all about. We wanna make sure our sausage gets nice and brown and crisp on both sides, and then we will remove it from the pan. Next, we will add our shrimp to the pan, 
Of course, we love shrimp on a busy weeknight because it takes literally no time to cook, especially when you have a nice hot pan like I'm working with here. As soon as your shrimp are cooked, they can come out of the pan as well. And then, maybe don't use these tongs. <laughs> maybe use something slightly more effective, like this slotted spoon, and we'll just lift them out and into this dish. For our third step, we will fire up our veggies. If you're noticing your pan is a little dry, you can add a little more oil to it. And then we'll get some onion, some celery, some red bell pepper, and some green bell pepper into the pan. I'm going to cook this, stirring it frequently for between four and five minutes until everything is nice and soft. Then I'm going to hit it with a little bit of garlic. And after just 15, 20 seconds, we will be ready to bring this all together. I'm gonna get my proteins back in the pan. The final step will be adding my Cajun seasoning with a little bit of salt and pepper. In this case, I am using some store-bought Cajun seasoning, but of course, if you wanna make your own, I have a recipe for that on the channel. I also have a recipe for that in this handy dandy cookbook that could be yours if you pre-order using the link in the description box. I'm just saying. We're going to get our stir on and within two or three minutes, this yumminess is ready to be served. I think that this would be delicious with a nice cold beer. Although I'm pretty sure beer isn't paleo either, so I guess we're gonna have to have a nice cold glass of water instead. Finally today, guys, I am making a seriously carnivore-approved paleo chili. Now in this case, instead of using beans in this recipe, I'm actually going to be using two different kinds of beef. So if you are a meat lover, this is definitely a dish for you. I'm starting with my Dutch oven on the stove. I've got some oil heating up. Once my oil is nice and hot, I'm going to get my first round of beef into the pot. This is some beef chuck that I've just cut into one inch cubes. We're gonna hit this with a little salt and a little pepper. And then I'm going to cook it in a single layer until it's nice and brown on all sides. Then I'm going to remove it from the pan and get to work on cooking my second type of beef, my ground beef. So I'm using extra lean ground beef here. I'm just going to get it into my Dutch oven and cook it, breaking it up with a spoon until it is no longer pink. Of course, it's important to season that up with some salt and some pepper because we want to season as we go. Once that's cooked, I'm going to remove that from the pan. At this point, we'll turn our attention to our veggies. I'm loading in some onion, some celery, some red bell pepper, and some carrots. So I'm really trying to load up the veggie factor in this recipe. We'll just cook these up for a few minutes and then I'll get my garlic into the pot. In just 30 seconds or so, that garlic is going to fill your kitchen with a wonderful aroma. And that is how you know it is time to get the rest of your ingredients into the pot. So I'm getting some sweet potato in here. Now I love sweet potatoes in chili because it's a nice sweet surprise amidst all of that savory, spicy, smoky goodness. At this point, it's time to add our cooked beef back to the pot, as well as some diced tomatoes and some chicken broth. Now you could use beef broth here, but I will tell you, with two types of beef in this dish, it tends to be a bit on the rich side. So you might wanna just cut down the richness a little by using some chicken broth. Of course, I think we could all agree it wouldn't be chili without our chili spices. So it is time to spice things up. I am hitting this with a combination of chili powder, garlic powder, ground cumin, a little bit of oregano, and for something extra special, a little bit of chipotle powder, which if you are not cooking with chipotle powder, I highly recommend you do. It's got great flavor, a little bit of spice, and lots of wonderful smokiness that is perfect in a chili. All that's left at this point is to bring this mixture to a boil, then we'll reduce our heat to medium, pop a lid on this guy, and let it simmer away for as long as you really can. I like to let it simmer for at least an hour. And when it's ready, it looks a little something like this, ready to be served up with some amazing green onion, some fresh lime wedges, and of course, a nice handful of fresh cilantro. Holy moly, guys, these are three dishes I can get behind. In fact, I would say some other one-pot dinners, paleo in comparison. <laughs> we tried. There's gotta be a pun in every video. You win some, you lose some. But when it comes to recipes, all three of these are winners. Don't believe me? Give them a try for yourselves. If you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me or Facebook me a photo, because I love seeing your kitchen creations. Speaking of kitchen creations, I have one of my very own. It's my cookbook, The Domestic Geeks Meals Made Easy, available for pre-order now. 
All of the links are in the description. Remember, you can get a sneak peek at five of my favorite recipes from the book if you pre-order. All those details are in the description as well. Finally, guys, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.